Welcome to our next talk by Euler Tavera, Speeding Up Logical Replication Setup. Thank you, Pablo. So um, I'm Euler. Um, I work for EDB, uh, and I'm a principal engineer, mainly work, working on Postgres and also some other tools in the Postgres ecosystem, like Fiji Bouncer, uh, Walter JSON, and other stuff too. So today we're gonna talk uh, about uh, one of my patches for Postgres. And the main motivation about this patch is that the logical replication setup, depending on your workload, uh, the initial data synchronization is slow. So the main reason is caused by the workload, as I said, and also because we have a huge backlog that we need to keep up uh, with it. And we have also other problems related to uh, setting up a logical replica, uh, mainly related to disk spaces because uh, big tables will require us to retain the wall until we have uh, everything copied and then we can apply the backlog. I will talk more about it later. Uh, the other point about it is that we need to enable uh, a way to do migrations better. I'm talking about different major versions. So uh, it's an important point because, you know, we have some systems that runs 24 by seven and uh, we need it. And the inspiration was based on the PG Logical 2 has a tool called PG Logical Create Subscriber. And I'm also, the last maintainer of the tool. So uh, we should probably have a useful use of this technology to solve a problem. Well, let's understand the problem. So how does the initial data synchronization works for logical replication? Well, first of all, it's done for each table. So Postgres has a table sync worker, and this process is responsible to sync a table. And it, the number of workers is controlled by the max sync workers per subscription. So for each subscription, we have a limited number of processes that we can copy data. So we have parallelism but it's just one worker per table. And that's why I mentioned previously that we can have some issues with big tables because we have just one process uh, doing the copy and we also need to keep up with the workload that we are receiving on the primary side. So basically, I, I'm not going into details about the architecture of uh, the initial data sync feature, but basically it does uh, a few steps. The first one is a copy table to STD out, right? And uh, to do that, we need a snapshot, uh, basically to retain the wall that we should apply after we finish the copy and start streaming. So after we finish the copy, that can take a long time because sometimes your database has big tables, uh, you have the catch up phase. So in the catch up phase, you apply the backlog. I mean, the changes that happen after you start the copy so you don't lose any data. 
after you finish the catch up phase, um, we have um, another structure that controls the state of each table that you have in your logical replication. So when the catch up phase finishes, we have to change the state from sync done to sync ready. After doing that, the the work for the table the table sync worker is done. So it basically passes the responsibility to apply the changes from the table sync worker to the apply worker. That that's the main process that will handle your logical replication. So it basically does it for all of your tables. So if you have a lot of tables, you have a lot of work to do. So that's why I propose a new tool to help it. After um, inspecting the code and trying to have a better way to improve this part of the initial data synchronization, I realized that um, it's not feasible and maybe we can use a different trick for uh, speeding up the, the creation of a new replica. So with that in mind, um, of course, we, we, we had a lot of bike shedding trying to figure out the name for the tool, but um, we keep this, uh, this name. I hope it's clear um, because what it does, it, it basically creates a new subscriber for you. So the idea behind it is that um, we use a physical replica and transform it into a logical replica. So someone can ask, but um, it will be more faster if you do that? And my answer is yes. Um, mainly because the way that we have the different uh, replication, I mean, the physical versus the logical. Because all of, all of the things I described in the initial data synchronization, we have a protocol that we have to pass the data through it. We have coordination. We have so much things to do. And it, I realized that it's better to have physical replication because it basically has uh, no strings that can prevent us to have uh, a replica as soon as possible. So at the beginning of the discussion, we have some benchmarks and even with small data sets, we have some nice speed ups like uh, in this uh, discussion. Um, so in, in the thread, we have some numbers uh, for it. So uh, the development starts in 2022. Um, at that time, um, we don't have enough time for the release at that year. And then we continue the development during 2023. And finally, after so many reviews and a lot of messages, suggestions, um, we had like more than 300 messages in the thread, um, we finally included. Um, along the the development, we have the help of seven reviewers. And I would say that that's an important part of the Postgres developer. Mainly because uh, it can help you catch 
some design issues also uh, try something that you didn't realize or something that just uh, will paint us in the corner sooner or later so that's an important part and i would say that uh, the development wouldn't be possible with so many reviewers providing some nice feedback and you will see that the tool is uh, a simple tool in terms of um, options that it provides and it helps using uh, the tool it's a small tool um, it has like more than two thousand lines of code there's a tons of comments on it uh, but i will describe how it works behind the scenes in in a few minutes well if you are interested in it uh here is the commit message it's the main one of course there there are other commits in it before it was released in 17 but it's the main one and the other ones were related to some refactories and some last minute uh, issues and also there are another one related to failover slots that uh, came in in the same release and we have to fix it um, so we don't have issues with uh, failover slots it basically was committed almost at the same time so um let's talk about the design so the design um is simple so we require an initial physical replica and it can be a fresh one or it can be some uh base backup that you you have available of course if it's a base backup we need the wall uh, because we need to apply uh, the wall until a certain point uh it's an application it's a server tool so it needs to run on the target server i mean the logical replica for the first version we decided to include all tables uh, and the idea is to have a simple design as a first step and then we can improve it later so it includes all tables in and if you need to create um, multiple um, publication subscriber uh, pairs you can because as you know the logical replication is per database so that's why um, i mentioned that uh, it's all tables in whatever database you want so you can have multiple databases and the tool create a pair of publication subscription objects for each database and we also have a restriction to have the tool in the same major version as the target server uh, it's mainly for simplification also uh, because it's supporting from 17 to now on and we can think about porting it if it's required uh, it's the same concept that we have behind uh, pg upgrade for example uh, we need a username that has some privileges to create subscriptions so if you don't want to use a super user you need to make sure that the username has uh, privilege to at least create subscriptions and also advance um, the replication origin i will uh, provide some details later and the other point also that's really important is to ensure that your configuration is sufficient to have a logical replica um, mainly because we start with a physical replica 
that has different requirements than a logical replica. So the tool ensures that you have all of the configuration parameters, and I will, I will also provide some details later. So uh, let's start with the funny part that is understand the concept behind the scenes. Um, people used to do that manually while trying to have a fast uh, logical replication setup. But sometimes it's not so reliable uh, in some points. Uh, that's why uh, I propose a tool to have um, a unique uh, way to do this uh, conversion. So um, the first thing we need to do is that the target server must be stopped. So if it's not, the tool will complain. Um, that's, you understand why I decided that. Basically because if you create a physical replica using base backup, you already have the, the cluster there and it's not a running server. And, and then you can start from that. So basically you can use the step of run a base backup and run the create subscriber. And then you have uh, your logical replica ready. Uh, the second step is that it starts the server with some specified command line options. So the idea here is to avoid any issues with connection or other clients connecting to it and um, having some issues blocking the tool. So we basically start the server in another part and using a different socket directory to avoid anyone from connecting to that um, replica. After that, we have to do the checks that I mentioned. So we check the primary server uh, for the configuration parameters. And we basically check three parameters uh, if the wall level is logical. If it's not, we can start a logical replica. Uh, check if the number of replication slots is sufficient. Remember, we need one replication slot per database. And also, we need to check the number of uh, wall senders because, again, for each setup, uh, we need one wall sender per database because uh, in the logical re replication, it's similar to the physical one. And for each pair of replication, we need a uh, wall sender. Uh, we also need to check the standby. Uh, again, we need the max replication slots here, but it's not to create a slot, it's kind of confusing, but it's to uh, create a replica origin. So um, we have the same parameter for two different things in Postgres. So uh, again, we need to make sure that we have sufficient uh, number of um, max replication slots to create the replica origins on uh, the subscriber side. And we also need uh, a number of worker processes because the, the logical replication use the background worker feature and this parameter controls the number of um, background workers we, we, need, we have. And after the verification, we stop the replica. And after that, we start the setup we create the required objects on the publisher side. I'm, I'm calling it publisher now because we are starting the conversion, but on the primary server. So we create 
a replica uh, publication and after that a, rep a replication slot for each database we want to uh, create the the logical replication and an important point of the whole uh, step is that we need a cutoff point and this cutoff point we use the the latest replication slot lsn lsn um, for you guys that don't know about it is a point in time in your wall so we basically um, have a point that will be the cutoff so before that i know that i have some data and we use this point to start the replication later so remember this point well and the next step is to start a recovery why we should start a recovery well uh, because as i said the server were stopped and we start uh, working on it so depending on your workload you should have some wall records to apply so we use the 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 lsn that we got in the the previous step to apply until there so i will make sure that i have all of the data included at that point so we use the recovery target lsn parameter with the exact lsn i got from the previous step and i also make sure there is no recovery target uh, parameter that's set because we have we have other targets too in postgres and i need to make sure that we don't have any other from a previous setup that you have uh, and if you and if you have you will have a failure at this step so we basically unset all of the the recovery target settings name xid or whatever you, you have and um another important uh, point at this step is that we set the recovery target to promote so we want to promote um, the target server as soon as we finish the recovery so we have a new cluster that's not dependent from the previous one and then after that we start the server we start the server to start the recovery and of course we will wait until it apply the wall and reaches the lsn that i specified and there is an important point here we don't start the replication yet because we can have some sorts of issues with it so we set the max logical replication workers to zero so the logical replication doesn't start we have the parameters to start it but we don't start it yet so we wait until the target to be promoted and at this point maybe depending on your setup and what you have maybe you get the wrong base backup from two months ago and it starts applying lots of walls and it doesn't finish so and remember we we create replication slots at this point so it can lead to uh, a failure in your primary server if you retain so much wall waiting until the recovery finish so we we want a tool that uh, can do these steps as soon as possible so to avoid this kind of problem we decided to have a parameter called recovery timeout 
So if it doesn't finish um, the to apply the wall as soon as possible, we, we have a parameter to control it. Basically, if you think about what we need to apply, uh, it's basically if you have a um, physical replica that was running, you basically have to apply wall from the time you create the replication slot until the time you, you start the, the server. So it can be a, a few seconds. So we expect it to finish soon. And important point here, if you have a failure after this point, since you promote the replica, there is no way to go back to the physical replica and start again. So if there is a failure after this point, you need to recreate. You will see that the tool will uh, provide a hint about it. Well, we also need to do some cleanups. Uh, the first cleanup we need is to drop pre-existing subscriptions on the target server. Um, basically because your primary server um, is a subscriber from another upstream server. So if we keep this subscription, since it's a physical replication, if we keep these subscriptions on the what will be the logical replica, this logical replica will try to connect to the upstream server because it has the, the, the connection stream. So it can be dangerous uh, and so we should avoid it. And there's no use for these subscriptions here in the, the logical replica. So we drop it. We also drop the publications that we create on the primary. So in a previous step, um, we create a publication and after that a replication slot. So the publication was created before the LSN that we recover until. So these publications were streamed to the logical replica. So we need to drop it because there is no use for it here. And one of the last steps for the replication setup is to create a subscription for each database. So uh, we divide this step in, in a few pieces. First of all, we create the subscription uh, with enabled equals to false. So we create the subscription, but we don't start the replication yet. And the reason is that we need to, to set the replication progress. There is no way to set the replication progress while you are creating um, the subscription. And also because the API to set the replication origin, basically where you need to start the, the replication, you need uh, to inform the name of the replica origin. And in the name, we have the OID of the subscription, but we don't create it yet. So that's the reason we have multiple steps here. We need the name of the replication origin and there is no way to have a name without the OID of the subscription. So after we create the subscription, we get the name of the replication origin, and then we set uh, the replication progress in a, in a special system catalog that controls it with, again, the same LSN that was our cut point. After that, we can enable the subscription and we are done. Uh, so we are finished, not we need additional steps. So uh, one of the additional steps is to remove a replication slot that was used by the physical replication. For example, you, you can have 
one and we have to make sure that we remove it because it has no use on the primary anymore and if you keep it you can you will have wall retention so uh, we also remove it we also remove uh fillover slots if there is any um it can be a problem later but um, we will discuss a new idea for for it uh, in future releases i will talk about it later and after removing uh we stop the target server and the reason is that we need to modify the system identifier uh it means that we use the pg reset wall behind the scenes and that's that's okay um it was uh suggested by andres while we are discussing the features and his argument was that we need to have a different identifier that's what we have in a logical replication setup and so if we don't run this uh, final step we can have issues with um, a cluster that's a logical one can reuse a wall from another cluster because in the physical replication that's okay but for a logical one we can have other system that's using wall from another system that's not related so that's why we have uh to run this step here and of course we have drawbacks for this uh, for this step um, one of them is that we we need to drop the failover slots um we discuss about um, limitations uh, later in a few minutes well here is the interface it's really simple that's a small set of parameters you have basically you have three main um, required parameters um, the first one is the data directory again we are running on the target server so we need to point to the directory on the target server that we have uh, your data directory um, the other one is the publisher server connection string remember we check parameters on the primary and we also create publication replication slots on primary so we need a connection string to connect to it and execute some uh, sql command and also we need a database and we can specify multiple options here to have uh, multiple uh, logical replication setups uh, i put the this parameter as required but if you have only one database and do not specify it um the tool will try to find the database name from your publisher server uh, connection stream but it's a good idea to provide a database name well we have other parameters uh subscriber port and socket dear uh, that basically is uh some parameters that i start the server while uh, executing the steps to avoid someone to connect to it as i also mentioned there is a recovery timeout that during the recovery you can have it uh and it can bail out if it's taking uh, forever to finish the recovery maybe there is any issue with it so it aborts the execution and you can also provide a username for the subscriber 
uh, a user that has some privilege to create things on the subscriber. There is a verbose mode that provides lots of messages. Basically, all of the steps that I, that I described in the previous slides, um, this verbose mode provides all of the, all of these steps with names of objects and uh, what point it's executing. So it's pretty straightforward to use it to check the progress of the execution. And if you're using a Debian-like system, you probably need this config file because Debian puts uh, the configuration file outside the da data directory. So you probably need this config file feature. And we also have a dry run mode. It's similar to what we have in the PG upgrade. So before running the tool, we can check if it passes all of the checks and then you are safe to execute it. So it's a good idea to execute the dry run before you run uh, the tool. And finally, we have three options at the end that we can provide names for the objects. Of course, it, it's optional. And if you don't provide names, Postgres will assign names for you. And the way it works is that if you have multiple databases, you can have multiple options here. And the tool will consider the order that you provide um, each option as the same as you have the database order. So if you provide DB1, DB2, DB3, and publication P1, P2, and P3, it uses publication P1 in database one and so on. It's the same for the replication slot and subscription. Okay, so related to the names of the publication, the subscription, and the replication slot, we have a name pattern that we create. It basically, if you don't provide a name, it will create a name like pg underscore create subscriber underscore uh, the OID of your database underscore a random uh, integer uh, for it. So it basically use it if you don't specify any of this option. And there is a special case that um, if you don't specify the replication slot, it will assign the subscription name for it uh, because I realized it, that's the same pattern that the create subscription uses. So I decided to use it too here. So um, if you run uh, the tool, let's see some examples. So in this example, we provide, of course, the dry run mode because we need just to check if that's, it's okay. So as I said, we provide database uh, minus D and another minus D to provide the data directory and a minus P to provide the connection string for uh, the primary server. And as soon as we run it, um, we we get an error saying that the target server is not a standby. So that's that's one important point. So I fix it and try again. And now it complains about uh, the wall level on the primary. So that's another issue. I have to to fix. So after fixing it, we have a complete execution. And here are some messages just for you have an idea of what kind of message we have. So we have detailed steps like 
uh, providing what step we are in, what system identifier we have, uh, message that we are starting the server, and that that we are checking some settings on both sides. And here is, um, again, continuing the message. Um, we stop this the subscriber, and then we create a publication, a replication slot. Remember what I said, we have that kind of weird name, but since we don't provide any publication name, it creates one for you. So uh, it continues the execution. At this point, it uh, waiting for the target server to read the consistent state. It reaches, which means it finished the recovery and um, as I mentioned, we have a hint saying from that point, if you have any error, you have to recreate your physical replica. And the final steps are described here. Remember, we are dropping a publication on the target server, creating the subscription, setting the, the LSN. Here, uh, we have the exact LSN we are using. And then we enable subscription. And as a final step, we are modifying the system identifier. So if you run in dry run mode and uh, reach the done message, you are okay to run it without the dry run mode. So um, let me talk about some warnings and limitations we have. So as I mentioned, again, if you have any issues after the promotion, you need to recreate the replica. Um, connections might fail on the target server, mainly because uh, the tool will start the replica with different um, settings, I mean, art. So if you have any tool that checks uh, if this replica, if this physical replica is available, it will fail for some time. Um, make sure that physical replication is different from logical replication. We have some uh, features that's not available, like the DDL commands are not replicated yet. So don't expect that it works. So maybe you, you might have a failure after you finish the setup and someone executed the DL on the on the the primary server. If you have a synchronous replica, uh, make sure that it will block your uh, primary server because we we are restarting the replica with different part. So make sure if you have a synchronous replica. Uh, you disable it before running the tool. And um, there is another um, design decision that since we run the reset wall, if you have a cascading scenario, like you have a server A, B, C, and you run the tool on the, the B server, you you will have issues with the servers uh, behind it, mainly because you have a different system identifier and there is no way to have a physical replication anymore because um, the tool will uh, change the system identifier on server B and server C has a different one. So maybe it's a good idea to point this server C to the, the primary or recreate the server C. I don't know. Um, the two phase commit are disabled. Um, we can check it later if it's possible to, to have it. And also, as I mentioned, we remove the, the, the primary slot. So uh, make sure you, you understand it. Of course, it, there is no use for it anymore. 
And here is a list of things that we, we can uh, do later. Basically, the main idea is to have a base backup support in it. So we can have just one step. So instead of running PG base, base backup and then PG create subscriber, we just run PG create subscriber and it creates the replica for you, the physical replica behind the scenes and also uh, convert it to a, a logical replica. And there are small things like um, removing some databases that you don't need on on the logical replica because you know the physical replicates everything so if if you have 10 databases and you need the replica with just two databases here uh we we could remove the eight databases that has no use on um, the target server and also have a fine-grained way to set tables Maybe you were creating a, rep, a logical replica with just a set of the tables you have on the primary. And also investigate the problem with invalidating the physical standbys that I described. And also investigate um, a way to have the failover slots. I mean, not remove it while converting it. So, I don't know if we have any questions or times for questions. In, in what in what cases you would discourage to use this approach? For example, I can imagine that if I have a lot of bloat on primary, then maybe I don't want to copy it over, but what are other scenarios where I would like to avoid great well, basically, if you have big setups, uh, you face this issue. Uh, so you will realize that it takes like a few days to finish setup. If you have a terabyte database and you want to create a replica, you will notice that it takes a few days to finish the setup. And with this approach, uh it will be just a couple of hours so that's the main use not to bloat a lot your uh primary server thank you for the talk uh my question is you mentioned that you are creating a replication slots for each database on the publisher side that's correct but you might get a different LSNs for each of the slots, but the recovery target is a single LSN. Which one do you choose? The last one. I think I mentioned it here. Uh, oh, the latest replication LSN, because I want to include all of the publications. The, the idea is if, if you don't, you can have um, nasty issues with uh, why will you set up uh, the 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 replication the start point of the replication? So you you need just a single point of cutoff. Uh, thank you for the talk. I was playing with the same method uh, a few months ago, doing all of these steps, but manually, but exactly in the same order. And what I found out is that if I have a transaction that was opened before I took the base snapshot, but that committed after the cut of LSN, I would lose it because it wouldn't be in the data files. It wouldn't be in the, well, it would be in the wall, but not marked as committed. And it would also not end up in the replication slot because the replication slot was created afterwards. So did you solve it in any way? Yes, there, there, there are some steps in the internet that do it wrong in the way that you do it. Um, the idea of this, um, that's the reason I use the, uh, 
that's uh, just one minute. Hello. I, I I can explain it, but the reason is that we have the replication slot stuff, and to create a replication slot stuff, you need to finish the transaction. The approach that people use is using a target name that doesn't um, have the transaction boundary in mind. So that's how I solve it. So uh, with the replication slot, we don't have this issue because it will block until you finish your transactions. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry.